In this lesson, we want to review applications of linear equations, and specifically, we're going to look at motion word problems. All right, so let's just go through our procedure real quick on how to solve a word problem. This is just a general guideline, something you can use as you're solving your problems. So the first thing is just to read the problem and determine the question, or in some cases, questions to be answered. The next thing is to assign a variable to represent the unknown, express other unknowns in terms of this variable. Then we want to write an equation. Then we're going to solve the equation. Then we're going to write the answer in terms of the question or the questions being asked. And then lastly, we're going to check the answer using the words of the problem. All right. So for motion word problems, a lot of you who took lower level algebra courses got a lot of experience with these. It's a very common type of word problem. They rely on the understanding of the formula D or distance is equal to R for rate of speed times T, the time traveled. This is a very intuitive formula. Think about being on a road trip and let's say your rate of speed is 80 miles per hour. So let's say this is 80 miles per hour and I'll just write 80. And then you do this for, let's say 10 hours. How far did you go in terms of miles? Well, you just multiply. The rate of speed is 80. The amount of time is 10. 80 times 10 is 800. So your distance is 800 miles, okay? So it's a very intuitive formula, something you can kind of work out in your head if you just kind of can't remember the distance formula. Think about being on a road trip and saying, okay, if I'm going at this rate of speed for this amount of time, well, I can multiply those two numbers together to get my distance. All right, let's look at our first example. So we have that Heather left school and drove toward the ocean. Daniel left one hour later and drove at a speed that was 15 miles per hour faster than Heather. After two hours, Daniel caught up with Heather. What was Heather's average speed? So this is what we need to answer here. What was Heather's average speed? That's the key. Take the second to look at the problem and understand the question that you're being asked. That's where a lot of students really, you know, they read the problem, they don't really understand what they're being asked, so they're like, what do I do, okay? That's what you've got to understand. What was Heather's average speed? So now we're ready to kind of go through the problem. And the first thing that I'm going to do is just let a variable, you can let it be X or it could be Y or Z, whatever you want to use, it doesn't matter. So let X be equal to, what am I looking for? I'm looking for Heather's average speed. So let's let X be equal to Heather's, average speed, okay? And this is gonna be in terms of miles per hour because that's what we're working with in the problem. Now we need to model other unknowns in terms of this variable X. So we have Heather's average speed modeled, but we don't have Daniel's average speed modeled. Well, Daniel, it tells us in the problem that he's driving 15 miles per hour faster than Heather. Okay, well, if Heather's average speed is X, then we can say that X plus 15, okay, that amount there is going to be Daniel's average speed. Okay, so this is Daniel's average speed. Okay, you can make those a little bit better. All right, so with this information, we can take this to a table, okay? And I'm gonna show you this table real quick. This is something you can use to kind of organize your thoughts, okay? So in this case, I'm gonna put the names on the left. So I can just kind of put it as the names if I want, and that's gonna go down like this. So let's put H for Heather, and let's put D for Daniel. To the right here in the top, I'm gonna to put D for the distance. This is equal to my R, which is the rate of speed, multiplied by my T, which is the amount of time traveled. So we already know for Heather, her rate is X, and for Daniel, his rate is X plus 15. Okay, what about the time? Let's go back up and see if we can figure that out. So it tells us in the problem specifically that Daniel left one hour later, okay? So he drives for an hour less than Heather does when they catch up, okay? Or when they're at the same point. So it says after two hours, Daniel caught up, and it also says he left one hour later, okay? So that means that Daniel was driving for two hours, because it says specifically, after two hours, Daniel caught up, 
And it tells us also that, again, because Daniel left one hour later than Heather, that Heather was driving for an hour more, so she was driving for three hours. So I can fill this out and say Heather was driving for three hours, Daniel was driving for two. Now, I can get the distance by multiplying these two together, okay? So in other words, the distance that Heather travels is the amount of time she travels for times the rate of speed that she travels at. So three times X is three X, that's my distance for Heather. Two times the quantity X plus 15 is my distance for Daniel. Now, let's go back up and see how we can figure out an equation. If we think about this, remember, they leave from the same point. Heather left school and drove toward the ocean. Daniel left one hour later, okay, so he's leaving from the same point. Now, they catch up, meaning they go to the same point when they're caught up, okay? So they leave from the same point, they go to the same point, so that means that Heather and Daniel drive the same distance. They do it in a different amount of time, but they drive the same distance. So what I can say here is that the distance for Heather, which is 3x, is going to be equal or the same as the distance for Daniel, which is two times the quantity x plus 15. So once we've set this up, it's basically a breeze from here. We would use our distributive property on the right. This is two x plus 30. On the left, we still just have three x. Let me go ahead and subtract two x away from each side of the equation. This is gonna cancel. I'll have that x is equal to 30. Okay, so this is another big problem. A lot of students get x equals 30 and they stop, right? We're used to just saying, hey, this is my answer, x equals 30. With word problems, you've gotta go back up and make sense of your answer. So x equals 30 tells me that Heather's average speed was 30 miles per hour, okay? And it also tells me that Daniel's average speed was 45 miles per hour because his is expressed as x, which is 30 plus 15. 30 plus 15 is 45. So let's erase this and say, what was Heather's average speed? We can say Heather's average speed was 30 miles per hour, okay? And you can check this pretty easily. You can say, are the distances equal? Well, if Heather drives at 30 miles per hour for three hours, she's gonna go 90 miles, right? Again, distance equals rate of speed, which is 30, times time traveled, which is three. 30 times three is 90. So when you think about the units, it's gonna be 90 miles. For Daniel, he drives for only two hours, but he does it at 45 miles per hour. Two times 45 is also 90. So you can say this is the correct answer. Heather's average speed was 30 miles per hour. And again, although it doesn't ask for it in the problem, we can say Daniel's average speed was 45 miles per hour. All right, let's look at another one. So we have that Aya left the mall and traveled toward her beach home at an average speed of 50 miles per hour. Jeff left the mall at the same time and traveled in the opposite direction with an average speed of 60 miles per hour. How many hours before they are 330 miles apart? So this is what we need to answer. How many hours before they are 330 miles apart? So let's label our kind of table down here. So we have our names going down. Let me make that a little bit better. So we have Aya and we have Jeff, okay? And then for this part right here, we have our distance is equal to rate times time. Okay, so what are we given in the problem? We're told that Aya's average speed is 50 miles per hour and Jeff's average speed is 60 miles per hour. So for Aya, the rate of speed is 50. For Jeff, it's 60. Do we know the time in each case? No, we're not given that. Okay, and in fact, what we need to find is how many hours before they are 330 miles apart, meaning they start at one point and one drives in one direction, another drives in the opposite direction. And we wanna know how long before kind of the distance between them is 330 miles, okay? So let me make that better. So what we wanna do is let a variable like X be equal to the amount of hours that they're each traveling for before they are 330 miles apart. 
So time in hours, we could say to get to 330 miles apart. Okay, let me make that a little bit better. So each of them are gonna drive for that amount of time. So we can go down here and we could say that this is X and this is X. Now, the distance that Aya travels is 50 times X or 50 X. The distance that Jeff travels is 60 times X or 60 X. In the last problem, we set the distances equal to each other, but that's not gonna work here because what we're saying is that the sum of the distances, the amount that Aya travels plus the amount that Jeff travels is gonna be 330 miles, right? 50X plus 60X needs to be 330 miles, okay? So if we solve this, 50X plus 60X is 110X, and this equals 330. We divide both sides of the equation by 110, and we're gonna get that X is equal to three. All right, so let's erase this, and let's say since X was three, and X represents the amount of hours for them to get to 330 miles apart. We'll just say it takes three hours for them, meaning Aya and Jeff, for them to be 330 miles apart. Okay? And that would be your answer there. And you can think about why that makes sense. If Aya drives at a speed of 50 miles per hour for three hours, she's basically going, let's say from this point to here, she's going 150 miles, okay? If Jeff goes the opposite direction, he starts here and goes this way, well, he's gonna go a little bit further because he's going faster. 60 miles an hour times three hours would be 180 miles, okay? So the distance between them now, from here where Jeff is, to here where Aya is, is 180 plus 150, which is going to be 330. All right, let's look at one more. So Jason can drive to Farmwood in two hours. If he takes the bus, it takes twice as long. If the average speed of the bus is 25 miles per hour slower than Jason's car, how far away is Farmwood? Okay, so what are we asking? We're asking for how far away is Farmwood, meaning what is the distance from wherever Jason starts to Farmwood? Okay, well, we know that there's two situations. There's one where he takes a car and there's another where he takes a bus. So let's go down here. So to start filling in the table, we'd have one scenario, which is a car and another, which is a bus. So this just represents the vehicle. So I just put V for that. Again, we're still gonna have our D for distance is equal to R for rate of speed times T for time traveled. So let's go back up. We're told that Jason can drive to Farmwood in two hours. So by car, the trip takes two hours. So the time by car, we're gonna put two there. And then if he takes the bus, it takes twice as long. So two times two would be four. So if he takes the bus, it's four hours. Now, in terms of the rate of speed, we're not given that. We're only told that the speed of the bus is 25 miles per hour slower than Jason's car. Okay, so let's let a variable like x be equal to the car's average speed. And again, this is in miles per hour. Now, we can model the speed of the bus based on this, right? If x is the car's average speed, since the bus is going 25 miles per hour slower than the car, we can say x minus 25 can represent the bus's average speed. So we'll say the average speed of the bus, okay? All right, so x is the car's average speed, x minus 25 is the average speed of the bus. So rate of speed for the car is x, rate of speed for the bus is x minus 25. Now we know for distance we multiply. So two times x is two x, and over here we'd have four times the quantity x minus 25, okay? Now, we know that the distance is equal, right? Jason can drive to Farmwood in two hours. If he takes the bus, it takes twice as long. So the distance is gonna be the same. So to solve this one, 
I can just set this distance that he travels by car of 2x equal to the distance of the bus, which is 4 times the quantity x minus 25. All right, so let's scroll down and get some room going. So we have 2x on the left is equal to 4 times x is 4x, and then minus 4 times 25 is 100. Let's go ahead and subtract 4x away from each side of the equation. That cancels. 2x minus 4x is negative 2x. This equals negative 100. Let's go ahead and divide both sides by negative 2. And we're going to get that x is equal to 50. Okay? So what does that mean? x equals 50. We won't stop there. We've got to go back up. So x is the car's average speed. So that means the car was traveling at 50 miles per hour. Okay? The average speed of the bus is 50 minus 25 or 25 miles per hour. That still doesn't answer the question. It didn't ask what was the speed of Jason's car. It asked how far away is Farmwood. Well, all we have to do now is say, since Jason can drive to Farmwood in two hours, and he's driving at 50 miles per hour, 50 times two is 100. So that means Farmwood is 100 miles away. So Farmwood is 100 miles away. Let me erase all this. Okay. You can check that pretty easily. Again, if he can drive to Farmwood in two hours and he's going at 50 miles per hour, that's 100 miles. If the bus is 25 miles per hour slower than the car, 50 minus 25 is 25. It takes him twice as long. It takes him four hours. 25 times four is also 100. So either way, he's going 100 miles. So that's consistent with our problem, right? Farmwood is 100 miles away. 